Hello there and welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Claire Jefford, and I have another great episode here for you today of a real client project. This is actually my very first client project, like the first custom decorating job that I ever had uh, from a proper client who wasn't a friend or a friend of a friend or, uh, you know, who found me totally separate to anything else, one of my marketing strategies, which I'm going to review here with you uh, as part of my clarity overview. So I'm just going to run down really quick what that means. All right. It's a client. Who's the client? That's for the C. The L is for locate. Where did they locate me? The A is for the assignment. So what was the project that I was hired to do? And the initial consultation fee. What was the initial consultation fee? Uh, the rates. So what was the rates for the project? What was the overall pricing for the project? And uh, also looking at events. So basically what happened? So there's the Claire and then the uh, clarity in the end for the I is the result. What was the what's the, the feedback that I got? Um, any sort of takeaways? So you know, what did I what did I learn? What did I learn? And then the why is for you. So over to you. So comment wherever you're watching this, reach out to me and let me know, hey, I've had something similar happen. Uh, You know, I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear because that's how we learn here by, uh, you know, sharing our experiences. So before I dive in, though, I just wanted to remind you, make sure that you are following me over on Instagram that we're connected there. I'm at Claire Jefford. Just clean, no underscores, nothing at Claire Jefford. I would love to see you there every Sunday. I actually do an interior design quiz, which is super duper popular. And uh, a lot of designers like to play along with that. So hopefully I will see you there. And now let's jump right into a real client project. And I'm taking you back to September 2011. So for those of you who may not know, I actually started my business in 2011, but earlier in the year in the spring. But this was one of my very first clients. So they were a retired couple, super sweet, uh, lovely elderly couple, uh, both English. So that resonated with me instantly because my husband is from England. And yeah, so a senior couple, retired, lived in a beautiful neighborhood, a very desirable neighborhood in my area. So I was really excited to have landed these clients. They actually located me at Staples. So Staples is, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's like an office depot. It's where you would go to get your kids stationery, your office stationery, printers, laptops, iPads, paper pens, you know, all that sort of stuff. And they actually had every month a um, business of the month that they would have set up. So a little small business, you could rent this table. If you want to find out more about it, it's actually part of my YouTube uh, marketing series on my Claire Jefford on the coaching channel. So look up Claire Jefford and uh, you'll find that there's a playlist and it's my marketing series. And I talk about this specifically and how this actually yielded me quite a few clients in the beginning when I was just starting out. So that was fabulous. And the assignment that they hired me for, they hired me, the project was for a living room. Uh, My client had had a friend come over from overseas, probably from England or Australia. And uh, she had, you know, came into the house and she looked and there was like, you know, it was like the Laura Ashley, like everything was matching all florals. So you had the floral sofa, the floral uh, love seat, you had the draperies, you know, the pillows, everything was the same, you know, uh, dusty rose and uh, forest green florals. So, you know, even though those colors are back in now, it's, it was in a very different way. Um, you know, they've come back, they've been, they've reinvented themselves. So yeah, so that was, uh, she decided, you know, my friend said that it looks like an old granny lives here and I don't want to be an old granny. And, uh, so they hired me to help them with custom furniture. My initial consultation fee, and if you are watching this on YouTube, just take a look at, you know, this old invoice. This, so this was something that I would have picked up at Staples, you know, there's a book like this. And it came in, you know, a couple different pieces, you know, and you just write your own invoice. So this was uh, September 15th, 2011. And my two hour initial uh, consultation fee for decorating was $150. So I charged $75 an hour. To give you some perspective, uh, recently you just raised my, raised my rates to $700 for two hours. So, hey, baby, you know, you come a long way. It takes some time, but with experience, uh, you know, you you, uh, <laughs> you get there. And I, I just think it's always so fascinating to look back at, at some of these. I'm looking at the invoices, the questionnaire, the feedback form. And uh, yeah, you just realize how far how far you've come over a time. So I highly recommend that you do that every, <clears throat> excuse me, every now and again. 
and the uh, rates for the project. So I billed four hundred and twenty five dollars on September 27 for a concept plan for the living room and uh, for the and for the floor plan. So this was pretty much like a floor plan. It was a 2D floor plan. I had a mood board. I sourced everything. You know, that was a that was a steal. Four hundred and twenty five dollars. Uh, and then from there, it was um, seventy five dollars an hour that I was charging for design services. And um, I started at 15 hours for design time. So uh, that was kind of like the block that was uh, that I that I started out with, you know, again, I really didn't know at this time how long it was going to take me to source everything. And obviously, I don't charge for the learning curve. But, uh, you know, so this was a really exciting project. And again, just looking at the numbers, you got to start somewhere. So if you feel like you're charging low, just know that in the beginning, you probably are charging low. And I know that I've coached a, a lot of designers and I say, please raise your rates like you're just too low. So I'm now still charging 75 or $100 an hour. This is like nearly 10 years ago that I was. So, you know, um, just 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 have a look. At, but it, it's fun. It's fun to reflect. And the events. So really, what happened with this project? Well, this project actually went along quite swimmingly considering it was my, you know, very first project, I did have the client sign, uh, well, actually have a, a, a questionnaire. So we have a questionnaire that they filled out, we signed my letter of agreement for my whopping $425 for the plans, the concept plans. And uh, yeah, so we I had to hire a contractor. And this was a new contractor for me. Uh, he was uh, referred to me by another designer. And we did work on a few projects together. He had some great ideas. And uh, he was also an electrician and he also was doing this, the stonework for the fireplace. Actually, but that's where I want to start is with the fireplace and not to be afraid that when you're working with clients, this is what I referred to this fireplace was the bully in the room. So I told you that there were pink and green, um, you know, florals, but the tile all around the fireplace was a hand painted Portuguese tile. I mean, very pretty, but very dated very traditional. Uh, and it had these colors with the rose and the green, but also with yellows. And, you know, the, so the first thing I said to the client, you know, was, are you looking to update this fireplace? And she was like, Oh, well, I hadn't really thought of it. And I said, Well, in order to really, you know, get you where you want to go and update this room and give it a refresh, that needs to that needs to go. So don't be afraid sometimes to let your clients know. I mean, they're in the, I always say like they're in the driver's seat, but you're the one holding the map, giving them the directions of, you know, how they should, how they should be guided through their project. And uh, so she, she was like, oh, okay. She just actually hadn't thought about it. Um, but, you know, once I explained to her that that really was dictating, right, which is why I call it the bully in the room, it was, it would have dictated, I couldn't have gone on with a different color palette or in a, in a new sort of contemporary, more updated look for her if we were sticking with that old hand-painted Portuguese tile. So uh, that was something that in the initial budget, like when, when we filled out my questionnaire and she had said how much she was looking to spend, that wasn't something that she had even considered was the fireplace. So again, that's why they're bringing us in, not so we're going to blow the budget, but so we're like, hey, you're going to keep this fireplace. You know, we, we really can't move forward and get you the look that you want. And that's why we come in with fresh eyes and with our expertise. Uh, so that was part of um, my contractor's work that he had done. We also added some sconces on either side of the fireplace. Uh, he had a great idea in terms of where to put the light fix, uh, the placement for the light switch. So I really enjoyed working with him on that project because, again, that was something I hadn't thought about. He had suggested maybe putting a light switch um, like two in two areas because the room was open to two different openings. And so he said, you know, do you ever enter this room mainly from this, this side over here in, in your family room? And she was like, yeah, like a lot. So he suggested to put that there. So I always, I always value, you know, if you guys heard my, my trades speaking to them the other day, this is a different contractor, but you know, we had them on the podcast previously and you know, it's just great to be able to collaborate with them and, and they see stuff every day too. So I definitely took that on board and that was fabulous. My client was happy and so then we also ordered um, all custom furniture. Uh, we had, well, we refinished a couple of our chairs. So that was great opportunity for me to try out a couple, you know, an upholsterer. So we did two chairs, a wing chair, uh, another like antique parlor chair. So we were mixing the old and the new. Wanted to, you know, keep it personable for my clients. And, you know, but a new love seat, new table, uh, coffee table, 
uh, area rug, draperies, some artwork, you know, so so it really was a, a great project to be working on. Uh, the other thing that she did was she wanted her floor sanded down. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the trades that I worked with there and we had the room painted. That'll come kind of uh, coming up in, in a minute. But yeah, so that I was just super excited because I'd been going to my design center for, you know, six months. And now I was like, oh, I actually have a project where I can, you know, buy so they can see that I am, you know, working and that I am, you know, not just wasting their time coming in here and looking at their fabrics and getting out samples, you know, and uh, so I was really uh, excited about this project. And the, like I said, the clients were just really lovely to work with. So uh, what happened? Oh, sorry, in the end. Okay, so in the end, so we've gotten through the Claire, now we're getting to the itty. Okay. <laughs> so in the end, uh, we I had I got a beautiful photo shoot it was my very first professional photograph space. Uh, you know, the room was more traditional than I probably would have, you know, wanted, you know, in terms of, was it my ideal project? Um, I'm going to say at this point, yeah, it was because I was just looking for somebody to invest in me and, you know, have confidence in me so I could build my confidence. And, you know, that that was, you know, something that you're able to do through in every project because we're always learning. So even though the style wasn't necessarily my style, I was still really proud of this room after. I loved the way that it looked and uh, my clients were really happy. Uh, so I do have a feedback questionnaire that I send out to clients. This is in my Rock the Initial Consultation package or my um, the bundle, the three-in-one bundle, if you're interested in having all of your forms and everything and not having to worry about creating them from scratch. And so the feedback questionnaire, so we just went through some questions, I would ask, you know, was there ever a time something was not communicated clearly, or you didn't understand my suggestions? She said, never. Did you, I said, did you find the paperwork pertaining to recommendations, um, you know, helpful? She said, definitely. So that was like the floor plans, the mood board, uh, were, were phone calls and emails replied to in a timely manner? She said, always. Uh, and just so you know, I sent this to them, but then I sat down and reviewed it with her afterwards, right? Came over to her house, brought her some wine, and then we sat down. We were able to talk it out a little bit more, which was great. Uh, so yeah, so uh, other things that she just, I said, did my services meet your expectations? And she said, yes. So here's some of the interesting facts though. Okay. So we get into a little bit of the, about the nitty gritty. So she, did you find my tradespeople knowledgeable, professional and approachable? So my seamstress, she said, absolutely excellent in every way. Um, my GC who also did the electrical work and the tiling, she said, excellent in every single way. The painter, however, she felt that he was overpriced and, he was really, but again, I, this was the first time I'd ever used this painter. It was a one room job. He had charged quite a bit to do the room. She felt it was quite expensive for the time that he had been there. And I felt afterwards, I never used this painter again. And I felt afterwards that because of the area of which she was in, which was quite an affluent area, I thought, maybe what he'd done is his price had gone up, which I, I don't agree with. Like, unless you're, you know, traveling somewhere and you, you can't find parking or it's in a condo, I think that just because someone lives in a nicer neighborhood, your hourly rate does not change, right? I mean, it's it, your rate is what your rate is, whether they're, you know, in, in a not so nice area, or, or if they're in an affluent area, your rate is, is your rate. As I said, if you travel, it's different. So I think that that's what happened with him. And he also, literally, I don't even think the paint had fully dried. And I hadn't even gone to the client's home to see it. And he was knocking on my door asking me for the balance of the payment because I was taking payment for him. Um, and so I was like, oh, wow, like, <laughs> this guy just can't even wait. Like, he literally just finished this afternoon. And now he's here on my doorstep. I haven't even seen the space. But of course, I paid him, uh, you know, because, again, I was new. But really, you want to have that walkthrough. You want to be going back to the site. You want to go, okay, let's just make sure. Let's check. Is the client happy? Is there anything else? Because once you've paid someone in full, especially if you don't know the trade very well, you may never see them again, right? or they may be quite difficult to get a hold of. So she wasn't thrilled with the uh, with the painter. The other thing, um, she did say though, based on her experience, she would refer my services to others. But she did say that the only comment that she has is that whilst they were discussing the design time and the cost of individual services and then furnishings, she said that we kind of lost touch of the overall cost, which resulted in going around $7,000 over budget. So she was saying that her initial kind of idea was that they would just be spending ten to $12,000 to update the living room and like I said they had a lot of their own pieces like we use quite a few old of their older pieces that didn't need refinishing but we did also upholster some pieces buy new pieces however what wasn't taken into consideration at this time when she was first filling out the questionnaire 
was the fireplace. So the fireplace wasn't even on the radar. The fireplace, she was just looking at the furnishings, right? So there's a the fireplace. Uh, and the fireplace, I do believe I have the prices here. Uh, well, I don't have the exact outline of the prices, but basically for the furniture and my contractor, who was also the electrician and did the tile work and, and the sconces, which were not as part of the scope of work that she had initially had in her head when we met, um, was just under $14,000. So you can see that right there, obviously a few thousand was in that, that was for work that, that she hadn't really anticipated on doing. So again, it's not because I'm looking to blow the budget, um, you know, and exceed what they're willing to spend. But I had brought ideas to the table that they just hadn't considered, right? And also people don't always have an idea of what things cost. You know, maybe they it was years since they bought a sofa. So, you know, when you bought a sofa years ago, maybe it was $800 and now, you know, they're 3000 So, you know, depending on how you're looking at different uh, pricing, different items. The paint was uh, just over $1,000. The floors were over a thousand. Oh, okay, so yeah. So I also I was recommended these. Um, I was recommended a flooring company to refinish the floors, and so this was something that I said to the client. You know, like you pay them directly. I'll call them. I'll let them know that you want them. It just wasn't something for whatever reason I felt that I needed to oversee, or or I don't know if I didn't think about it at the time. Uh, so she just said like with the flooring people, and again, I'd never used them and I would have never used them again since, um, she did have some people saying that she was pleased. Um, she wasn't pleased with the company themselves. They weren't on time. They never came the same days. They spent far less time than they said that they would. And overall, uh, they were pretty good, but there was a few flaws. I guess that they thought were still left on the hardwood. So again, that was something totally new to me dealing with someone who was finishing hardwood. I didn't have a clue on what that would cost. Um, and they weren't the most reliable, which is disappointing because you just want people to give you that phone call. Like if you're going to be late, or if you're not coming in today, just let the client know or let me know if I'm managing it, that sort of thing. Right. So just, so again, it's just comes back down to having those conversations with your trades, being open and upfront, communicating about how you're going to work together, who's communicating to the client, who's paying, who's the client paying, you know, so going back to that episode with my contractors. Um, but yeah, so in the end, overall, she was happy, but you just have to remember that, you know, her 10 to 12,000, like I said, you know, we ended up going into, you know, 19,000 by the time also we added in my de design fees. So that was something that now I'm able to navigate much better when I speak to clients. And I also really recommend that you give ranges. So, you know, 10 to 12,000 is, is pretty tight. Like I would say, you know, we're probably looking at like 10 to 15,000 or, you know, 15 to 20,000. So give like a range, but just let clients know that things can happen. There could be scope creep. There could be things that I'm going to suggest that you really love the idea that you never thought of. That's why you're bringing me on board. You know, if we could keep it all obviously under a certain amount and within budget, obviously that's great. But sometimes just remember that their expect, their realistic, their expectations, sorry, of what it cost are not realistic just because no, no, people are always confused on exactly how much things cost, right? Um, so yeah, so that was really, um, as I said, so in the end, that was a feedback, the takeaway, like I just mentioned, knowing your trades, understanding pricing, which comes with time. Um, and uh, now, it's over to you, my friends. I want to hear from you. Uh, you know, message me, it depends where you're watching this, I'm recording it for YouTube, I also have the podcast. Um, I think you can just leave a review in the podcast, which I would love, by the way. Um, but I don't think you can leave comments on a podcast. But wherever I'm sharing this, if you have something that you want to add to that, then feel free to reach out and let me know. And I'd love to hear, you know, what you what you thought about that. Does it sound familiar, you know, for a very first project? But overall, I was super happy. The clients were happy. And they did hire me again when they moved into their new home. So that was always, that was nice as well. We reused some of the furnishings that I had found for them the first time. All right. My name's Claire Jefford. I've loved having you on board with me here for my real client project. And make sure that you are subscribed to getting my updates. So you will get my, uh, you know, find out every time I publish a new video. If you're watching on YouTube, obviously, you're going to hit the subscribe button and hit the red bell below. And otherwise, uh, make sure that you're subscribed to the podcast. And if you're not already in my Facebook group, it's a private group for interior designers. My tribe is amazing. It's called Interior Design Business Strategies. So make sure you search that up on Facebook. And I look forward to seeing you there. Take care. See you soon. Cheers.